Hello everyone and welcome to day number 12 of 66 days of data with Naim. And today we are going to conclude section number two, descriptive statistics. So without further ado, I would suggest today we jump right in. We are going to talk today about zeros, about missing values. We are going to talk about infinities and NAN, which is an abbreviation for not a number. And I'm showing you a little bit in NIME today, and I'm going to show you a little bit um, on another website named Wiki Analytica as well, which has some very nice dis um, definitions. So as always, you can find the page that you see here on the screen, this page here, you can find it in the description of this live stream slash video link below. So let's first have a look at NIME and have a look at NIME and missing values. So let's just have a look here. And let me show you what missing values are, if we have any. Well, it might be difficult. We might not even have some here. So if we don't have some missing values here, maybe we just create quickly a table and I show you what missing values look like. So let's just assume we create this example table. Here it is a string and we say, a, B, we leave these two open, C, D, one open, E. All right. Okay. Execute. And what you can see here from the, um, from the, uh, um, oh, let me just increase the font size a little bit. Okay, what you can see here in the results table of this NIME um, example that we just created are the red question marks. And the red question marks actually do represent what NIME sees as missing value. It's not a zero, it's not a space or anything like this, it's just an empty cell. And that is quite important because NIME has options to do things with that. So let me just quickly show you how NIME deals with missing values because there is um, there is a note in the transform section of the manipulation category. And if we just connect this one and say, hey, you know what, if you find a missing value for a string, enter a fixed value, just enter ZZZ, for example, yeah, let's just see what happens, execute. And if we look at the results table, we all of a sudden see where there were red question marks are now ZZZ. So that is some things that you can do. As always, you can combine all kinds of things with this. You can connect this with loop nodes, with flow variables, you name it. So you can um, have, for example, things, if you collect a number of dates, um, and you have cells that have missing values in it, you can say, for example, it's always the 1st of January of a specific year, for example. That's something you can do. So you have a consistent column that does not hold any missing values. And you can basically um, let the let uh, and I'm do the heavy lifting here for you. One thing um, that I find a little bit unpleasant, to be very honest, is that the nine missing values are red question marks. At the first or on first glance, this looks like an error, right? There is something wrong. There is nothing wrong, basically. It's just that there is no value in that cell. So that's not necessarily an error. So I find here it could be improved, but quite honestly, I also don't know how. So once you know that the red question mark is not an error, maybe that helps you a little bit. And it also shows you that there is something you can do with it as we have just learned in this example. So let's have a look at the other things that we want to talk about today. So we had missing values. Let's just go to Wiki Analytica and see some of the other things um, that we are um, going to talk about. And those are namely infinity, inf, not a number, and null. So inf means infinity and is the result of dividing a positive number by zero. So I have learned in school that you might, you're not allowed to divide uh, by zero, but in mathematics, that's basically 
doable, but the result is infinity. Or comparing a number larger than, and I cannot even read that number, I guess it means 1.796 um i i don't know what how what the 300 uh, times 10 uh, um taken um by the 308 uh, potency or however that is called so the largest number that your computer can represent in 64 bits i did not have the case so it's rather the upper one than the lower one um but uh, yeah that's just another definition of um of um what infinity means and minus infinity means negative infinity so the result of dividing a negative number by zero so the example is the same as above um but it is a negative infinity so not a number means n or nan means not a number and it is a result of a calculation that is not well defined is not a well defined number nor infinity for example zero divided by zero is not a number the square root of minus one will also result in not a number um, they say if you enable complex numbers that returns the valid imaginary number 1j i'm not sure if that's even correct to pronounce but in general that is a a feedback that says hey what you have done here does not result in a number and that is important when we look at things like the math formula node in nine because that definitely needs some kind of number right so something like an integer or a decimal number or these kind of things so also very important to know um, because we need to find a way in case this occurs to deal with these numbers and finally we have nulls and nulls means that there is no such value and that is maybe the most or the closest one to the missing value we just have looked at so if you just see just imagine you have an index year here and the index is basically one two three and then you want to have the fourth fourth member of that of that index here that is not existing it only has three man members and uh, hence the result will be null so you can null means that there is no such value um and that's that's uh, um, as i said maybe as close to um the missing values um then we can see so if we remember let's just close this and let's go back to nine let's just um open the interactive view from yesterday's video again and have a look at it and just look um a little bit at the details of some of the columns so that's the table these are the columns and we see all the values here that we have discussed yesterday and let's just randomly go on uh, just somewhere in uh, in here so we can see for example this column does not have missing values this column does not have not a numbers and it also does not have positive or normal infinity or negative infinity numbers in here and that is once again a good feedback about our data set right that helps us to better work with our data set further down the road so we know for example when we look at energy or let's have a look at danceability um we know that we don't have to deal with missing values because out of these 586,000 line items no one basically has a missing value so we don't have to deal with this and that's quite helpful because if we use this node here the data explorers what we since we have done that yesterday and i will link yesterday's video here um, up above um where we introduced um uh, this and the video before that also um basically um that's a very good starter node right you get a data set someone says do something with it work with it fulfill that task a b z Maybe that's one of the first nodes you want to have a look at. You want to get a feeling what your data set is made of. Well, also in regards to how much effort you have to spend, right? If all of these 20 columns in this specific Spotify tracks data set would have lots and lots and lots and lots of missing values, well, then we need to find a routine or a sub workflow or something to deal with these missing, missing values. We cannot just simply ignore them. And that's basically something why I say, and, and maybe that's why this data explorer comes so early 
in this 66 days of data um, because it helps us to analyze our data set as a very first step. So that's it basically for the lesson for today. One thing I wanted to ask you guys is can you please hit like and subscribe for this video because it helps me to produce more of these videos and to support you in your data science journey much better through these videos. That's it basically today for today. Tomorrow we're going to start with a section three and let me just quickly have a look. Section three is one, two, three, four, five lessons about histograms. So we're going to work with charts and we're going to learn what they tell us. So that's it for today. Have a great day today and see you tomorrow in 66 days of data with nine. Bye bye.